Got it. That's right, Jamie. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and share the screen. And let's look at what we need to do to make this year one of our best, if not absolutely our best year. All right, here we go. So dream year 2024. Uh, we let in a couple more individuals here. Let's see if I can bring them down. Here we go. All right. Dream year workshop 2024. Now workshop versus a masterclass is a masterclass you do more listening. A workshop we do more working. We work together that way we can accomplish things. Calling in from Florida. All right, Gail. Hi, Miss Hill. Good to see you. I was hoping you were able to get in. Good to see everyone. Hello there, Anthony. Good to see you as well. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I did have the flu. Thank you so much. Had a touch of the flu, so I'm feeling better. My voice might be a little bit scratchy, but we're going to make it work and make it do what it does. So let's get started with what we want our dream year to look like um, from Maryland. Okay, dialing in from Maryland. That's right. We have a, quite a few DMV people. I, I try not to be partial, but, you know, we do we do what we need to do. A lot of us are very, very proactive in making it happen. And I'm quite sure in other places why well, I've just lived in Maryland and Florida the longest. So what does a dream year look like? What is the strategic plan? What is the will of life? And I'm going to ask you guys first, uh, has anyone heard of the will of life? Has anyone heard of this? Put a one in the chat if you've heard of the will of life. Put a one in there if you've heard of it. Seen the diagram, heard it, let me know. Okay, so let's see. One, one, yes. So the will of life is about our life. A lot of people design their business around their life. You want to make sure that you have your life in place and you design what type of business you want instead of going the opposite. They'll have a business and they'll fit their life into their business. That normally doesn't work. And there's no such thing really as a balance because there's going to be times that you have to work harder especially if we call in the grind period. And the grind period we're going to look at is between one and three months. One and three months of the grind. And then we might extend it from like four to six months, depending on what your goal is. So the will of life is making sure that we have our business career, our finances, health, family, friends, romance, personal growth, fun and recreation, and physical environment all together. Each one of these make up a perfect life, a dream life. Now, what I'd love to, for you to do is take a look at this, and then I want you to score yourself. We'll take a couple of minutes. I want you to look at each one of these categories. 10 is the best. You are rocking and rolling in this area. One is you know what one means. So go ahead and rate yourself. And then what I'd love to know is what I'm going to ask you guys, like, where would you give yourselves in finance? And then I want you to put the numbers. Then I'll do health, put the numbers, friends and family, romance, personal growth, fun, recreation, fun, recreation, and physical environment. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes, write down 10 is you're rocking and rolling in that area. And then, and, and then, so, you know, if the five is average, you know, two and three, anything under a five is kind of like below. So let's kind of rate where we are and where we want to look at where we want to focus on. So let's take a couple of minutes. Tick tock, tick tock. I'll give us three minutes. It's 12.05. We're going to start putting it in the chat at 12.08. So go ahead and look at these and start kind of assessing where you think you are. And this, of course, is an informal workshop. Like I said, the goal is to work together. There's no right answer. We just want to start assessing where we want to find our beginning. We have to know where we're starting from to be able to assess where we're going to end up. Okay, got a minute left. All right, so let's start going ahead and putting it in there. So Let's first go with, I am going to choose finances first. Put a 10 if you are doing phenomenal finances, you have a decent, not very much debt, 
your finances, you're on a budget, you're budgeting, you know where your money's going, put a put a 10 if it's just fantastic. And let's see where we are. Three, four, thank you for being honest and being transparent because that we're not about, oh, 10, good. Okay, good, real good. All right. So we're looking at the uh, average. There's some improvement there. And we're going to look at what we need to do to make it a little bit better. All right, good, good. Thank you guys for being transparent. All right, health, same thing. Where do you rank it with health? So now I see seven, eight. So let's wait a couple of minutes. I see we have some, uh, all right, great. Perfect. Okay. All right. So let's wait a couple of minutes. Um, and now let's put a two or let's go with three. A three means health. So put a three dash and then your number. That way we know we're not on finances, we're on health. So three is indicating your health. Three then, okay, three, seven. All right, that means you're a seven in your health. So put the three, three, eight, good. All right, three, seven, three, nine, real good, three, seven. All right, three, nine, I am impressed. Okay, really good, real great. All right, real good, good stuff, okay. And if you're a little behind, just put the number two is for financing, three is for health. Now we're going to move to four. Four is for family and friends. Do you think you have great relationships? How supportive is your partner? So put a four and then put, oh, 10. All right. Okay. Really good. All right. Real good. Oh, wow. Now this is one I'd have to put like a four or five. I've got to work on that. So I'm being transparent. Friends and family, I've got to work on that um, a little bit more. I've traveled a lot, not nurtured as many relationships. And that is probably one of the most important things. Now, when we look at romance, we're talking about a romantic relationship. So romance, five, put with number, that's important as well. 10, okay, all right, zero. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, seven. All right, gotcha. Two. Okay, good, real good. We're almost done. Personal growth. When we're looking at this, are we learning? Are we stretching ourselves? Are we learning new things, new languages, new business? We constantly want to be on the role of learning. Let's look and see where we are with this because this is closely related to business. Nine, 10, all right, eight, seven. Wow, good, real good. Okay. Three more to go. Fun and recreation. Are you having fun? Are you doing things fun? Put a, so for fun, we're going to put a seven for fun. Are we having a good time? Are we engaging in fun and recreation? Very important. Five, nine, seven, one. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's real important. Fun. And, and we see the will of life means we're balancing, putting pieces together. We don't want to have a 10 in one area and a zero in, in another without us acknowledging that that's something we want to work on because I believe that all of it comes together. Now, the last one is our, phys our physical environment. Is it, is it peaceful? Is it, you know, is it harmonious? Are we, do we feel like we're growing in our physical environment? So if you feel like you, you know, your home is peaceful, calm, you've got that feng shui going, whatever, give me a, give me, see what that looks like. All right. Because that's important as well. Very, very important. Good, good. Last one. Moving so eight, five. Gotcha. Now, this is the last one. I say the business, which a lot of us are doing. We're entrepreneurs. Some of us are in our career. Where do you rate your business? 10, you are on it. And a zero, you are looking to get there. So zero to 10. Let's rate our business. Okay, three, six, four, seven. Okay, four, five, four, nine, good, seven, great. All right. Well, I hope you guys um, thought about this. This is something that I've used throughout and I am a big proponent of finding the pieces. There is, like I said, no right answer, but we do wanna make sure that we balance it. So kind of look at where you rated yourself 
write it down and start implementing some of those things we're going to learn today. So the reason why I start, I know we're talking about setting up a strategic plan in this whole year for having a really, really great workshop. What do we need to do to have a dream year? So the first thing we have to do in order to build our six and seven figure mindsets, in order to have our six and seven figure businesses, is to look at why we're doing it. We need to have a personal mission statement. And we're going to take about three minutes. You don't have to share that with me, but it's like your North Star. You need to know why you're doing this because it will get tough. You will lose contracts. You will have employees that don't do what they're supposed to do. It will be a very, very tough journey, regardless of whether you're looking to go to seven figures, eight figures, six figures, it doesn't matter. But your mindset is everything. 80% is how we think. And that's what we're going to discover here today. 80% is how we think. 20 is what we do. 80% is the way we think about it. So I want you to create your personal mission statement, meaning why do you want to have a six and seven, seven figure business? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? And why is it important now? So take a couple of minutes, write it. I think we've got it in your workshop, your workbook as well, um, because we want to understand why is this important? So write that down. And then I want you to eventually put it somewhere where you can see it every day. Every day, like my personal mission statement has always been, I like, I'm a freedom person. I do not want to have to have someone tell me when I can go on vacation, tell me when I can go to lunch, tell me when I can get a, a, a pay increase. I've always been that way. So if I have control over my vacations, then I have control over my life. I have more freedom. So my personal mission statement is I want to have a business that allows me freedom and money. You can have a business that allows you freedom, but you're not making a lot of money. Or you can have a lot of money, but you're not making, you're not, you don't have a lot of freedom. And when I consist of a lot of money, I'm saying at least six figures. We really can't do anything under six figures. We can do more with six figures and then lean towards seven. So start creating, why is this important to you? Why do you want to have this type of business and this type of freedom? Now, the next thing we need to figure out is how do we know what we're worth an hour? Part of the problem is figuring and focusing on what to do and what not to do. There's, so much, there's only so much time in a, in a day. The average person watches four to six hours of TV a day. Four to six hours. Now, if we look at the average person, most people probably don't like where they work. They may have a mediocre marriage. They may not like where they are physically, or they may not be in the health they want to be in or have the kind of relationships. And it all starts with being aware of it and being intentional. I'm going to ask you also, how many of you have set goals for the new year? Put a one in the chat if you've set goals for this new year. Put a one in the chat if you set goals for 2024. Okay. Almost everyone. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you another question. I know this isn't the first time you've set goals. How many of you who have set goals before have met at least half of what you set? Put a two in the chat if that's you. Last year, the year before, you set these goals and you met them. Okay. All right, so we see a combination of ones and quite a few twos. So then you guys are really, really great goal setters because most people do not meet even half of their goals, one, two. All right, so now let's figure out what we're worth an hour. So I'm gonna get, you, get your pen and paper and I want you to write down what is the amount of money you want to be making. I want a specific amount, 250,000 a year in the next year, in the next year, when we're sitting here together next year, let's say we're meeting together to recap or follow up from the workshop and we're sitting here and we've gone through the year. I want you to visualize what is it that you want your amount of money to be for that year? How much do you want to make? 100,000, okay. Write that on a piece of paper for me. Or uh, I think you had a million. So Gail says a million. 
I want you to write down how much you want to make in a year. And then on that paper, I want you to write down on the paper. Now we're talking in a year. I see someone saying three milli, a milli, great. Well, we're gonna look at some specific things here. I want you to write it down on a piece of paper too. So get your paper, pen and paper and write it down because we have to do a little bit of math here. Okay, so Gail said 100K, um, a million, three million, we've got it. Once you write it down, then we, we're going to take that and we're gonna divide what that is in a month. So we're gonna take it into 12 to divide, to, to say what we want to make a month. And then I want you to, to figure out what you want to make in a week. And then you should be able to figure out what you wanna make in an hour. So I'm gonna give an example. Mm -hmm. Let's go with a million. That's a nice round number. If I'm looking to make a million dollars, I think one of the workshops we figured out, it's 2,500 and something an hour or a day. I think it's an hour. I don't have my calculator in front of me. What I'm trying to get at is, you know your amount. Once you, and you may figure this out once you've completed this workshop for today. The reason we want to know what we're worth is because then we're going to take our time more valuable. If we're trying to get to that mark and we're looking at television and we haven't done the things we need to do, we should be turning off that TV and making sure that the strategic plan we're going to make together today, we've already done what we're supposed to do daily, weekly, monthly, hourly, and quarter, and then that year. That's how we break it down. So once we figured out what we want to make for the year, then for the month, then by the week, then by the hour, you can go by the day, by the hour. I think for a million, it's 200 something thousand or $2,000 a day. Whatever your amount is, that's what you need to be mindful of. Because if you're not making that yet and you've got some extra time then what should you be doing with that time based on your strategic plan? This means we're going to be intentional. So now let's look at, and once you guys have already gotten what your figures are, write them down. Now what I want you to do is to create your ideal lifestyle. Just think about what time you want. Like, I don't like to, to do anything before 10. I want to work out. I want to meditate. And I want to start work at 10. And I want to work Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And I want to be able to work from home and in the office if I choose. Get off at 3.30 and have off on weekends. I want to be able to travel maybe two months out of the year and have enough money where I don't have to worry about my business because I have a team that's doing what they need to do while I'm traveling or going to soccer with my kids or being with my mom or my husband, whatever it is, or my wife. Create your ideal lifestyle right now. I want us to take like three minutes, write down what, what time you want to go to work. How many hours do you want to work? Because you've got to know what you're working for. Why are we doing all this? Because when we come up with our strategic plan, it's only going to hurt, help, help and hold weight if we know why we're doing it. So think for a second, what would your day look like if you, if you could create any day you want? What time would you start? What time would you end? What time would you take lunch? How, how, how many weeks would you be gone a year? Maybe you would only work six months a year and travel the other six. If there were no limit on money and time, how would your, how would your lifestyle look? Take a couple of minutes and write that down. And please write it down on paper. Not just in your head. And then put a one in the chat if you've done everything up into creating your, your lifestyle. Put a one in the chat so I can know where we are. Okay. So now let's recap. We've got our missions. We've got our personal statement. We know how much we're worth an hour. That's how you know what your net worth is, what your, what your value is, what you're worth. You've created your ideal lifestyle. And how do you convince yourself of that? Now, this is where we're going to write down the formula that works for setting goals. Because before we get to setting up our businesses, which we're going to do to, to dive into making six to seven figures, we have to make sure that we have this part done because this is the foundation for everything. 
You're not going to get to that if you don't have this right. Trust me. You might think you will, but you won't. And if you get it, you won't have any peace because you don't have the foundation laid for your lifestyle and why you're doing all of this. So now let's write down how we're going to set our goals. We're gonna set our goals with the SMART. SMART goals. How many of you have heard of SMART goals? Put a one in the chat if you've heard of SMART goals. Okay, perfect. So let's, let's set our SMART goals. I want you to write down your SMART goals. So it's specific for the S, M is for measurable, R is for, I'm sorry, A is for achievable, R is for relevant, and T is for time bound. Now we're not going to do that all together now, but let's take one goal. And the one goal is to be able to make a million a year. Let's take that one. We wanna make that million. So first is specific. I wanna make a million dollars in a year. The next thing is measurable. How do I measure it? And that's what we're going to talk about. How do I know what I need to do to get to a million dollars? And specifically, let's talk about it with government contracts, because that's where most of you have been starting with me with, with government contracts. So I want to make a million dollars. I want a total contract value of a million. So that could be that the contract is four years. Let's go with the four years. Let's make it, let's make it really, really easy. We want 250 a year with the four year million dollar contract total. And we wanna be able to make that, okay? So let's say that, let's go with 250 a quarter and there's four quarters. So we're going to be able to make 250 a quarter, a million in a year. So we're specific. Now, how do we measure if we're getting closer to our goal? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Achievable. A lot of you said you wanted to make three million. Are you making any money now? Is that is that achievable? Can you make three million in one year based on what you've done before? You have to ask your you have to ask yourself this question. Why have I not? And I don't know where all of us are. We're at different places, but we have to ask ourselves a question. If I'm saying I want to make a million and I haven't made a hundred thousand yet, is that reasonable for me to think that I'm going to do something? that in that year, I'm gonna be able to, to, to leap to a million. So let's make sure it's achievable. Then we wanna make sure that it's relevant. If I wanna make a million so that I can take off for six months and travel, it makes it relevant for me. I'm gonna lose interest six months in, if not sooner, if it's not relevant. So write down why you wanna make the million, why you wanna make the six figures. And then the last reason is time bound. So we know what our goal is. We are going to talk about how we measure it. Then we wanna make sure that it is achievable. Then we wanna look is, is it relevant? And our time frame is a year. We want to make a million dollars by January the, what's today? 13th, I think. By January 13th, 2025. All right. Anyone have any questions on SMART, SMART goals at all? Out of anything I've ever done to be able to achieve my goals, the SMART goals have worked for me time and time again. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of, a lot of other pointers that's gonna do the same thing. Okay, so now let's go to our next, which is understanding why we do what we do. When we say all of this great stuff, the first thing we have to think about is that our thoughts lead to our feelings. Our feelings lead to our actions. Our actions lead to our habit and our habit leads to our behavior. So the way we think is gonna dictate how we feel. The way we feel is gonna make the difference in if we get up or not and do what we say we're gonna do. Once we start getting the action, we build habits. And once we build the habits, we build the behavior. So let's be specific with the million dollars. We know that we need to make 88K a month in order to make a million. So whether you're looking at 500,000, 100,000, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You have to do a little more if you're looking at the million, but it's the same thing. So what's your thought, your feelings, your actions, your habits and behavior? First of all, we have to know that we can do it. We've got everything we need. We really do. 
You can make a million dollars in a year with government contracts. It's not going to be easy, but you can. You can make 500000 So we know that our thoughts have to, have to make us feel that we can. Now let's look at the actions. So I'm going to skip over this for a second, and I'm going to go to setting up our strategic plan. So let's get our plan together. When you're setting up your strategic plan and in your workbook, you should be on the page where we have setting up our strategic plan. The first thing is a strategic plan takes us from where we wanna be, a million dollars, and it takes us to where we are. Let's say we're at 100K. Let's say we're at zero. We're, we, we haven't even done anything yet. So we know where we are and we know where we wanna end up. The first thing we have to get straight is setting up our marketing. We're going to set up our marketing first. In order for us to get to a million dollars in government, specifically in government, now you can use this in anything else. Let's say you're here and you're working a nine to five and you want to get an advancement. Now I'm going to gear it more towards entrepreneurs because that's what we do. So we're looking at marketing to the government where we're making a million dollars. The first thing we have to figure out is like anything else, what is it that we want to offer the government? And I'd like to see in the chat, how many of you put a one in the chat if you are here and you specifically are looking, put a one if you're looking for government and two if you're looking to do a nine to five your career. So one is for government and two is for if you're doing a nine to five. Okay, great. Now we can do a one and a two, but I see that the majority of you here are looking to make that milli as an entrepreneur, not working for someone, and you're looking to do it in government. So the first thing we need to figure out, okay, two, one, absolutely, perfect. I started out doing uh, EY and start doing that, um, CPA, and start doing it while I was working. So it's definitely doable, absolutely. So let's first look at how do we market to the government if we're looking to make a million dollars in a year, what does that look like? So the first thing you're going to have to do, okay, perfect. So I see a lot of ones. The first thing we're going to have to do is understand a strategic plan and make sure we write that down. Be very clear. It is a step-by-step-by-step -step -step on how we're gonna go from where we want to be to where we are now. Most people work from where they are to where they wanna be. You've got to go the opposite. Start off from where you want to end up, a million dollars, and work back. We know that we need to make 88K a month. We know that. And then if you want to, you can divide it into, because um, usually, you know, you're going to get paid by the month. So let's just stick with 88K. What is it that we're going to have to do to offer the government our services that's going to be likely that we're going to make $88,000 88, a month? Well, the first thing is, Every one of you, if you've ever been with me, I'm going to once again show you something and then we'll come back to this. So let's look at this so we can do a recap. So the only way you're going to be able to make sure that you know what the government wants, every one of you that have gone to any of my classes, Crack the Gov Code, workshops, where do I always start? USAspending.gov. USAspending.gov will give you everything you want. So I want you guys to know it's like the back of your hand. USAspending.gov is going to tell you what the government is spending. Now, I'm going to just do a little quick, um, to show you something very quickly so we can look at something right here. So we'll just go with janitorial services. We'll go with fiscal year 23. And then we're going to go down to award type. And we want contracts. Then we're going to go to the agency which I know the awarding agency, because I've done this before, is Department of Health and Human Services. Let me let this person in. Department of Health and Human Services. So we're gonna go with Department of Health and Human Services. Now we're getting to where, we're not gonna get the country, anything like that. I'm not gonna worry about the location. The recipient, we're gonna make sure that we talk about a small, we're gonna go with general business and then small business. That's anyone under 19.5 million a year. Can't see my screen. Can anyone else see my screen? 
put a one if you can see my screen. Okay, um, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Bates, everyone else can see the screen. So maybe you need to get out and come back in. Okay, we're on small business, no sole proprietorship, any of that, we wanna stick with small business. We don't wanna do minority woman owned, that's too specific. Then we wanna do the award type. Now this is where we talk about a milli. So I'm going to choose a million to 25 million. Now I've got my filter set. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to hit submit. Now, when I hit my, let me let her in again. All right. Now, when I hit my submit, I'm looking at fiscal year 23, all contracts, Department of Health and Human Services, small business, a milli to 25 million. Now I'm gonna hit time. And what I'm looking at now is in years, now we wanna break it down to quarters. So when we look at whatever it is you're doing, we know that the, the quarter of the fourth quarter, which is always one of the ones they spend the most money on, we know that they spent that amount of money in janitorial services for, the, for our, my department. So does that mean there's something I can do? Absolutely. I know what quarter is. We all know that they go by the fiscal year. So the fourth quarter is, what is that? From uh, July to September. So the fourth quarter is the quarter. Now let's break it down into months. Once again, we see that the probably the month of September is gonna absolutely be the biggest month. But there are a couple other months that stand out as well. So the reason why we're doing this exercise is the first thing you wanna do is to see if there is enough money in what you want to offer the government to even see is it plausible to make a million dollars for that year. What you want to what you want to offer may not be able to be in that range. Then I want you to go down when you're doing this on your own, and I want you to put in your location because it's always better to do work with a government agency that's in our backyard. Most of us are going to have Social Security. Most of us are going to have Veteran Affairs. Most of us are going to have the Department of Health and Human Services. We may not have a small business administration. In DC, we do, we take it for granted, but you may not have that. So we need to know, once again, we go back to our formula, what we're offering and what money can be made. Now I know I can make a million dollars. I know that now, I've, re I've researched it. There's no question I can make a million dollars. So how do I make myself marketable when I'm setting up my strategic plan? So let's go back to the slideshow presentation and look at what we need to do. When we're setting up our strategic plan and we're gonna start with marketing over operations, we need to put down what days we're going to market. And then we need to put down our revenue. So write down now how much you're making. How much are you making in your business a month right now? That's your revenue. Then I want you to write down how much you want to be making in 30 days from today. So February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Go all the way, but start in February. So we know we're making 3,000 a month. And we're trying to get to 88K. So now you start to see, if I'm making three and I have to land a contract, where I'm gonna to have to make up some time because I may not land that contract for four months. So I've gotta make sure that I'm being realistic on what I know I need to do. And if I see that if I'm making 3,000, there is a long jump between 3,000 and 88K. So now we know that we know what we wanna make and what we wanna end up with. And we know what the difference is. So let's go with the month of February. What are we going to do in the month of February to market to a contracting officer, a specialist? Because remember I said, we're not looking to work with the KO, contracting officers. We're looking to work with the OSDABU. We're looking to work with the small business programs and we're looking to work with the specialists. So in the chat, how many of you have ever reached out to your OSDABU have you reached out to your small business program or have you ever reached out to a contracting specialist in any government agency? 
Put a one if you have. You've reached out to them. Okay. All right. Now, we didn't get a lot of people that said they've reached out. There were only a couple of people that said they reached out. In order to market, you want to be proactive and reactive. We want to go after them and they want us to come after us. How many of you, and I know my students here would probably say yes, but let's see. I see a couple more ones. How many of you already have your dynamic small business search profile done? Keywords, narratives, everything. Put a two if you've already got that. Put a two in there if you've already got your DSBS. Okay. So I see quite a few, quite a few twos. Now let me ask a question. How many of you are already making over 3K a month? Put a three in the chat if you're already making over 3K. Okay. So a lot of you are making under 2,000 a month. All right. So the number one thing we need to do is we have to make sure that we have the basics not yet. All right. No worries because it can happen. In order for the contracting officers, specialists, and programmers, pro the small business programs to come to you, they're coming to you because I'm always a big proponent of a no bid. A no bid can get your foot in the door and then you can look at that same year. I was able to win a no bid and then within 90 days, I was able to get a contract for over $3 million, okay? So it can happen. Even though you may not be doing it now, remember, we're already determined we can. This is a trillion dollar industry. So if there's a trillion dollars out there, there's no reason why we can't get our million. And even if we want to start with 500,000 and, and make 100,000, which is a great place to start. So that's fine. What do we need to do to be proactive and reactive? Remember, the very first thing we need to do is to make sure that we can be seen. So when we're marketing, we need to make sure our brand looks good and that everything we do is, a, is, is like similar. Our branding is similar. So when we're doing our profile, we want to make sure that when we're doing our DSBS profile, our websites are on there, our capability statement is on there, any and every way they can reach out to us because that is the number one way you are going to be found. You're going to be found by doing that marketing. So when we're setting up our strategic plan, I want you to write down on your marketing a check mark if you've gotten your website, your CAPE statement, your introduction statement, your capability narrative, your DSBS profile already done. Let me see in the chat how many people have all that done. I'm going to repeat it again. Website, introduction letter, capability statement, capability briefing and your DSBS profile, all done. Everyone's already done that. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Now, once we set up our marketing for our branding and we've got our DSBS profile, we start what we call six week increments. So everything we just wrote down for our goals, our six weeks are going to start, let me tell you the date, January 22nd. So January 22nd is the start of the six weeks, or you can start yours starting next this coming Monday. Six weeks is important because you want to take three, three weeks to implement and three weeks to execute. So now let's set up our marketing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to reach out to the, the game players that, that make the difference. We're going to set a marketing up for at least three days a week. We're going to set up our strategic plan. We know what we want our revenue. Now we have to go after them. How do we go after them? By appearing to have something that they're going to want. And the number one thing is going to be that differentiator. You can't hear me talk about that enough. What is it that you have that's going to make them say, mm, now this company can do it faster. They can do it cheaper. They can deliver it better. 
always, always, always work on what it is that's going to differentiate you. My favorite was indoor air quality. My indoor air quality system was phenomenal. It saved the government agencies money because it saved them money on their health plan. We were able to demonstrate that we could save them money. And that was because we took this indoor air quality filter inside. It was like a, a little reader. It would read the indoor air quality. We'd show them what it was like before and what it was like after. By doing just a couple of small things, we were able to show them that what we were going to offer was going to be able to change the indoor air quality in those buildings just like that. So we did build it, we did a lot of facility support services and we did staffing. We made sure that one of the things we did was we were able to say that our staff was 50% trained and they had longer term, most of our people had been on, um, if they wanted them, they would, they would want to hire them like maybe two weeks. Because of the training we did, we were always cutting edge training. Where most people, they were so far behind, most individual agencies had to train them. So we did a lot of staffing. We did nursing. We did a lot of staffing with nursing, logistics, and such. What you're going to have to do in your marketing. Marketing is what brings them to you. Sales is when you make the sale. So you've got to bring them to you. And the way you're going to bring them to you are the breadcrumbs that you that lead to your website, your CAPE statement, your elevator pitch. You're not going to bring them to you and then close the sale if you don't set up a great marketing plan. So in your strategic plan, the first thing needs to be marketing. How are you going to bring them to? We've already gone over our DSBS, all of those things. Now, one of my other favorite things is calling them. You're going to call them. We have a, I think it's like 2,000 names that you will receive from being here on this workshop of the agencies that you're going to narrow it down with me together in just a few minutes that are going to be a great fit for you. You're going to call them. Some people are really great with emailing. We're going to do that as well. But don't be afraid not, don't be afraid to call them. Ozdaboos, I know you guys all know what the Ozdaboos are the small business program managers, they want to talk to you. They want to see what you're talking about. Now, we're not reaching out to the KOs. That's after we've already gotten the bid and we're looking to actually place the bid. But all the rest of them can position your company where you can reach out to them. So marketing on Monday, we're going to make phone calls. We're going to make 100 phone calls a day, a week. You need to know your number. How many, I knew that I needed to make let's say 200 phone calls a day to land one thing. So you're going in that six weeks when you start in on Monday, what you're going to implement is just dive right in. My marketing, I'm going to make sure I've got all the things Ms. M said set up. Check, 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 check. Now I'm going to make my phone calls. What am I going to say? That's where your signature statement, that one thing that you do well. And so that's where you have to really land that. That has to be your marketing. You've got to know what you're going to say that's going to make you stand out. What is it that you're going to have to do your research? In your industry, what, what's lacking? Is it in logistics, the speed, the delivery, nursing, it, it's the quality. You are going to have to research your NAX code. That's what you're offering the government. That's what you want them to buy from you and find out the weaknesses. And then you're going to have to capitalize on that. Even if you can't, you're not looking to reinvent the wheel. There's something you can do better than your average competition. That's what you have to market to have them come to you. So if you're able to market speed, that's going to be your winner. What's the best tool to use for research? The best tool to use for research is DSBS. When you go to DSBS, let's share it together. When we go to DSBS, this is what happens. So I'm, a, I'm someone looking to have a nursing, uh, I need some, uh, let's go with trucking. I need, um, you know, someone to come in and do logistics for us, or we need staffing, or we need security. DSBS is a part of your SBS profile. This is, the, this is what it's called, Dynamic Small Business Search. Why is it so important? Because only small businesses can put a profile here. You have to be a small business, and small business for SBA is 19.5 million in mo annual revenue in most in most uh, NAX codes. 
19.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking, this is everything. USAspending.gov lets me know what, what they've spent and what they want to spend. You can go to your 20, you can go fiscal year 2022 and look at what they've spent. You can go to acquisition.gov and look at what they're looking to spend. And you can also do a lot of that on USAspending.gov. So you need to know what they've spent and what they're looking to spend. You've got to know your agency like the back of your hand. The biggest problem with us on why some people win million dollar contracts and others don't is you're scattered. You're everywhere. We all know that the number one thing we want to do is what? Go to a specialist. If I go to the doctor and I say something's wrong with my skin, I don't want to go to my general special. I don't want to go to my general doctor. I want to go to my specialist. We are determined. One of our goals is to be a specialist in what we're looking to offer. I became a specialist in indoor air quality. I knew it like the back of my hand. So when I did my elevator pitch, when I went to an event and there were government buyers there, I could talk to them about why they should why they should want to talk to me in like 25 seconds. Your elevator pitch just gets their attention. That sets you up for the capability briefing. So don't think you're looking to sell anything with your elevator pitch. Your capability statement is your one page resume which also allows them to see what you've done, just like a reg regular resume. But I may only, I may look at a lot of those or I may not have a, a lot of time. So now we come to our DSBS. This is the best marketing tool to do research, the best marketing tool to get found, the best marketing tool, period. So let's say for instance, and I'm going to go with one of my favorite places, which is DC. Now I'm gonna get real specific with you guys. You see right here, that I can filter anything I want. I can choose a small business, an economically disadvantaged woman, small disadvantaged veteran, anything. But I'm not going to fill that in because I don't want to narrow it down too much. I then can choose whether or not I want to be, you know, we're all, self, we, all of you should be self-certified um, small business. You can do that on your SAM. You can actually be a self-certified small business on your SAM. Now I'm going to put in my NAX code. And I'm going to put in the 561210 because it's you can do staffing, you can do janitorial landscaping, um, unarmed security, groundskeeping, all of that. That's why I love that one. Now, you can also, which a lot of you don't know, you can check off in your DSBS profile, which I want you to do, you can check off services. You can narrow it down because a lot of times the government buyer is going to check off whether they're looking for manufacturing, construction, R&D, or services. You can put in, I wouldn't put in any bonding. Now I can choose what I want your gross annual to be. Why am I going to put that if I'm a contracting officer or if I'm a government buyer? Let's see what the question is. I'm in NAX code 5210, payroll service standard is 32. Can I still use? Yes, because that's your standard size. That means that you're considered a small business if you're making under 39,000, 39 million. Each NAX code has its own size standard. I know facility support services is 19.5. So you need to know what your size standard is for your NAX code. You can simply look that up. You're welcome, Don. Now, I'm a buyer. When a lot of people, the other mistake they make is that they will, you're welcome. A lot of individuals look at their CAPE, their DSBS, their SAM, all of that, and they put it in there and they forget it. Every time I did a project, I was updating all of that because this is how they're finding me. So every time I did something, I came right back. If I had some employees, I put it in there, even if they were on there for that one project. Now, I get a lot of questions as Ms. M, they ask for how many employees, not 1099s. That's correct. They do ask for employees and not 1099s because sometimes they want to know if you have employees and not 1099s. But I know I use a combination of both. I use 60, 40. 60 were employees, 40 were subs. I like both. When I first got started, I did nothing but subs. Why? Because I couldn't afford payroll. I couldn't afford a, a, that payroll. So now we want to make sure that we understand why we're doing what we're doing. Why are we using subs? Why? Why are we doing the other? As soon as you get your first employee, even if it's part-time, make sure you put that in there. You're going to make sure in your DSBS profile, you put in your gross revenue. 
Then one of my most important things is, do you accept government credit cards? You guys have heard me talk about that time and time again. You want to get a merchant account, very important. We talked about that because then you can do a, 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 a micro purchase, 10K and under. A lot of my projects that were small, I did with a micro purchase and I got paid like two days later. They do, a, if you do event planning, you do a lot of that. That's a big one. Then we come down here and I am going to put in, use this criteria. Now, right here, we're looking at the DSBS profile. The capability narrative is what we see. Your capability narrative is going to be a combination of a paragraph and your words. The number one thing that a lot of people do wrong is they don't have keywords in there. Go to, um, go to Google AdWords, go to Uber, suggest. You want to know what your keywords should be because if I'm looking for you, I won't find you if I'm looking for certain keywords. Can you use QuickBooks? Absolutely. You can use QuickBooks to set up your merchant account. I have QuickBooks and I have Truist. QuickBooks is the easiest. It's like $42.50 um, for the first three months for the premium, which sets up your merchant account. And I'm, I'm not going to forget to tell you guys about the CTA either, which is the Corporate Transparency Act. I want to make sure I cover that as well. So right now we've got right at an hour. I'm going to go over a couple more things. We're going to take a quick little break, like a five minute little break. I'll give you the time to come back and we're going to go into setting up the other parts of our strategic plan so that we know exactly how we need to go. So the, the next thing we need to do is make sure we come to putting in companies that are a competition in our area. Now, Ms. M, where does DSBS be can do we place on our case statement? So your DSBS, on this DSBS, so let's go with this. I'm going to share with you where this is. If you go into your DSBS, you're going to see where it says you can put a link for your case statement, which should lead to your website. So your website is where your CAPE statement should be, where it's a downloadable document. We're in, we're in, we're in. Okay, where do you put it? When you're putting your DSBS, it's going to have, and you'll see this in a minute. So let's come here. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to do a dual play. I am looking for you for competition. I reside in D.C., a lot of competition in D.C., so you have to bring it. D.C., Maryland, Virginia, we all know that, that live in the DMV area. A lot of people do, this is what we do, government. So if I come here and I want to stand out, I'm looking at photocopy, sales, service, blah, 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 same stuff all the time. So all of this has the same stuff all the time. And let's see, I'm just making sure that I am recording this. Let me make sure here. Hold on. Okay, yeah. just want to make sure. Start talking, I'm like, oh, did I start? All right, so... One of the mistakes a lot of people is they sound, look, and act the same. If I were to come here and you guys are looking at this, this is not giving me anything. The government likes percentages. They want facts. I can't emphasize that enough. Now, they stand out a little bit more. Anyone that's seen me, I probably picked this one the most, National Service Contractors. Mr. Abel here. Why? Because I'm getting some meat. He's talking about he's got $30 million in bonding. He tells me that he's worked with um, this agency, he does, you know, landscaping, snow removal, skilled labor. He gives me a lot more than almost anyone over here. What a lot of these people did was they only filled out the key words. They did not fill out the capability narrative. They only put in the keywords. So if I've got a project and I don't want to put it out to bid, it's 250 and under. And the goal is you can get several 250 and under projects. Don't think you only have to get one. So if you're looking at making that milli, you can get several 250 and under total contract, total value, because the total value is the whole year. So it could be one year, it could be a, it could be a one-time project. I did a lot of one-time projects. Now, what's my next step for setting up my marketing? My next step is making sure that I know my competition. I've got, I have to know what my government agency wants for me. Because they don't want you to be all everywhere. They want to know that you can solve their problem. And if you know more about them, let's say you want to work with GSA. You need to know what GSA wants, what GSA needs. You want to work with the Department of Justice. You need to know. How do you know? Visit their website. 
I've already shown you guys and talked about download their budget. There shouldn't be anyone on here that's looking to work with a government agency that has not downloaded their budget. That's how you know. And very few people do that, probably under 10%. The majority of your competition is not downloading budgets. And in the budget, it tells you exactly the, the verbiage of what they want. And that should be in your website. That should be in your case statement. So if I'm looking to work with FEMA, FEMA tells me exactly what they're wanting. Yes, Maureen. Miss M, when when I um when I was looking at the budgets, I saw also the congressional statement. Excuse me, I forgot to put my scarf yeah. on. Congressional statement for um which what, like is that worth looking at as well? Absolutely. Okay, so Okay, because sometimes I wouldn't necessarily see the budget, but then I would see the congressional statement or response. Right, so, but no, you should see the budget as well. You should be able to okay. find the budget. If you put in the agency, um, like Department of Homeland Security, what I love about it also is it lists all, you kind of get their org chart. You get a chance to look at all the other things that they're doing. I want to know what's under the Department of Homeland Security. I don't, I'm not going to know off the top of my head. There's like 435 agencies Um you know, 19 or so departments. I need to know that. I need to know these agencies because they're looking to give me money, hundreds and thousands of dollars. That's the least I can do is get to know them. I'm going to visit their websites. I'm going to go to the small business program and we're going to go to LinkedIn. So now let's go ahead because we don't want to get off time. Let's go to this company. I've done my research. I've looked at what they say they do. Now, right here, you see where on here it's going to say capability statement link. Does everyone see that? So inside of your DSBS, you can put a link for your capability statement You inside of your DSBS. Yes, so that, that's where you want your capability statement to be. Then you see all their information. I can see everything I'm looking about with Mr. A. Then I can come here, I can learn out, I can learn about his certs, I can learn everything I need to know. Um, this is his capability narrative. He put in a paragraph and then within his capability narrative, he put in his keywords. This is one of the biggest ways, if anyone's listened to any, a lot of my students that win contracts in two weeks to 90 days, almost every one of them will have the same story that they were found through DSBS. Mm -hmm. So now when we're setting up our strategic plan, let's go back to that before we take our break. Our strategic plan should have, the first one we're gonna put marketing. Our marketing plan should be downloading our budget, writing three or four key bullet statements on what they've spent money on, what they're going to spend money on, and the next thing is making sure that we've met every requirement on our DSBS and all the other positioning I mentioned, CAPE statement, introduction letter, capability briefing, which is different than our CAPE statement and our capability narrative. Our capability briefing is this. I've gotten your attention. I've then gone on and I've said to you, when people ask me, what do you do? I save small businesses money by doing X, Y, Z. I can small. I can save a government agency money um, by doing X, Y, Z. Really? How? Why don't we set up a capability briefing? I'd like to. Your goal is to get their attention. You're not trying to make the sale. You're marketing. Marketing is different. Now, once I've gotten their attention, I'm selling them with my capability briefing. What's your capability briefing? It's just like your capability narrative. The same thing with just bullets, just like I've got here. Do it on PowerPoint. You can design it. It won't take you but a minute. Anyone here will receive a sample of a capability narrative uh, briefing just in case you don't have that. So I'll make sure I include that in this. Then I'm going to set up how many days a week I am going to do my marketing. So one day I'm doing research, Monday. Tuesday, I'm doing DSBS, you know, research on the agency on Monday, I'm going to DSBS on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm writing up my introduction letters to send out. Thursday, I might be going on to sam.gov to look at current bids because we all know current bids are on Thursday. And 
Friday, I might be going on usaspending.gov to research some more information. So when you're setting up your strategic plan, every day needs to have a milestone. So now this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to do this right here. So let's skip over something for a second. Let's come here. I'm going to set up my milestones. So how many phone calls am I making in my marketing? How many? Because you guys are going to get this phone call. You're going to get this list of over 2,000 agencies. And your intro to them should be, hi, my name is, and I provide, I, I can, I'm looking to provide this for your agency. I want you to be specific. No quality assurance, none of that stuff. Those are just buzzwords. I want some meat there. I'm going to provide, uh, because we're doing our indoor air quality and we're able to reduce the allergens in the air by 50%, we're able to reduce your insurance by this amount, or we're able to come in and we can do nursing and we can turn, you know, because of our software program, we can turn it around in this amount of time, or because I have this set up for logistics, we're on um, the software where you can locate our drivers anytime, whatever it is. That's what you want to make sure you're saying when you're calling. I totally recommend calling and emailing. Some people are phone people and some people are email people. So my milestones for marketing are going to be to set up the dates. I'm going to say how, with the number of actionable items I'm going to take. And then I'm going to set up the time frame. I'm going to do it on Monday. I'm going to make 25 phone calls. And I should get 20 or let's say 10 capability briefings in two weeks. That's what you need to put for your marketing and be real specific with your milestones. So we're going to set up our milestones for our marketing. We're going to set up our milestones for our sales. Our sales is how many contracts we cover. How many contracts do we get signed? That's contingent upon our marketing. Now we know that our sale is, is actually signing the contract, actually being awarded the contracts in our sales. Now we're going to cover our leadership, our admin, and our operations. And then we're going to look at what activities we need to set up and our scorecard. We're going to take a score every six weeks. So now we're going to take a break. It is 104. If we could be back in, let's say, um, one. 10 minutes after one, 10 minutes after one, we'll be, we'll be back. And, um, you guys can, you know, just take yourselves off the screen, uh, however you want to do it, get some water, but be back right at 10 after we're going to start right at 10 after. And we're going to set the milestones, the scorecard and talk about exactly what we need to do in order for us to be able to make this happen. I'll see you back at 10 after one.
All right, all right, all right. Let's get it together. Let's get it back. Now, a um, couple of things. Some of you may not know what Ozdabu is. So let's, I'm going to share my screen with you and share with you where they are so that you understand that. And then you understand how important role they play along with your small business programs. Um, there's managers that work as well. So I did get a question and one of the questions was, and I get that a lot when people want to know, the question is, as a small business with no past performance in the role of the middleman, am I adding the subcontractor's past performance in the DSBS as well as in the capability statement? Also, do I need to change the, cap the website capability statement? So yes, you can, if you're looking at doing the middleman, remember you wanna be real specific with it, with, with agency you're working with with the middleman. And yes, you can um, go ahead and add their past performance as a reference. Now, a lot of times when you are getting a bid, when you're looking to do a bid and you're looking, and if you're asked about past performances, a lot of a lot of times I've noticed that they will ask for the past performance and they will want them to send it back to them. So in other words, it's not coming to you. It's going back to the uh, agency that's looking to gather the information for submitting for you to submit the bid. Of course, that makes sense. They don't want you to be able to put something in there and it's not really your your reference. And a lot of them do check references. And sometimes they don't. But absolutely, you can put because think of this person as an extension of your team. They're an extension of your team. So you can put them in there. And that's when we look at looking at setting. So let's go back here and understand where we are with the milestones. So when we're setting up our strategic plan, we want to make sure we set it up for marketing. Now, let me share this with you so that all of you can see the Ozdabu. So let me go here. And let me just make sure you can still hear me and see me. So if you could give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat so that I can make sure that you can still see me and hear me. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure we're still here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thumbs up. All right. Okay. Now let's get down to where we're going to find them. Once again, we're not looking for the contracting officers. We're looking for the connectors. There are people that connect us to who is going to actually help us with the bid. That's what we're looking for. Every one of the departments has an Ozdabu. And the Ozdabu, let me make sure I say this correctly because it is a mouthful. The Ozdabu is the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. So we want to know the Ozdabus. Now, what you guys are going to get is this list here. Let's see if I can find this list. Um, first, let me bring this list up. So let me put in Ozdabu. And this is my Ozdabu checklist. Every one of you who's ever worked with me probably already have this. And then I also have a list of over 2,000 names of agencies with their emails in their names. Now, some of you are great writers and some of you are great um, as far as verbiage. You know, you're able to deliver and you're good and you feel comfortable. You know what your best marketing tool is. If your best marketing tool is email and you're really great at writing, then send your introduction letters and your capability statement. If you're, I'm more of a verbal person. So mine is going to be more verbal as opposed to, but we're, we're going to look at marketing as a pie. 30% might be capability statements, 30% might be introduction letters. And you might say, okay, this other percentage is going to be where I'm going to go to an event and I'm going to, or either I'm going to call, I'm going to call up the Ozdabu and say, hey, I saw a contract that I'm interested in. And I'm going to share with you how you find that contract. And then you call them or you email them. Do not be afraid. The most they can say is, I don't think I can introduce you. What you have nothing to lose, so we have to get of our get out of our own way. But this is a list of all the Ozdabus. Every department has one. Each one of you will receive this. Now, 
if you see here, the Ozdebu Office of Small Business Programs, that's what you're looking for, and the Ozdebu. These are our connectors. If you connect with them in the right way, they will work. I hear all the time, they'll look over your case statements. They'll look over your capability briefing. They're here. They're, they're, that's what their job is. Utilize them for what they're getting paid for. It's our tax dollars. So utilize it. It's all of us. We're helping to pay. They're paying their own salary, we're paying it as well. But that's what you want to make sure of. Do not be shy. So each one of you will receive this and it will have the information on there and it's got phone numbers. If you're a little shy, then start out with sending the email. But we all want to look for Ozdebu. Every agency has an Ozdebu and every agency has a, a um, small business program. That's where we want to go and connect. Now, once we come here, so are there any questions on this list. You'll receive this list and you also will receive the 2000 names that I'm talking about that you're going to use to set up your marketing for um, setting up your marketing so you can start writing on your milestones on what you're going to do. So let's go back here for a second. I've already set up my marketing. I know what I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I've already got that set up. My sales from my marketing, I want to close one contract every month. So now I've written down what my milestone is for my sales. I've got my milestone for my marketing and my milestones for my sale. For leadership, I want you to set up trying to find a employee six months after getting started. A lot of times agencies will look eventually at you having employees. That is important. But it, you can start with the, the subcontractors, especially if you're looking at doing the middleman. So leadership can be, I want to add two to 99s. Um, I want to add one. So remember, when we're setting our goals up, we have to be specific, measurable. We've got, we're going to, everyone has to be a smart goal. So for leadership, um, I'll show you what my art, let me, let me go back here and show you what my org chart look like. This is what your org chart should look like. So here's mine. Me, I've got my marketing person, my salesperson, I've got my operations, my admin, and my leadership. It's just a simple org chart. I want each of you to, um, I'll try to make sure Jessa, which you guys probably all met Jessa, I'll try to make sure that uh, she sends you one of these that you can fill in for yourself. You want your org chart to be where you want to end up. So in other words, you may you may not have anyone where your marketing is. You may not have anyone where your sales is or any of those. Put it down anyway. Put your nice little face on there as a CEO. And, and eventually this is what you're looking at having. At a minimum, you want to have marketing, sales, operations, admin, and leadership. And, and, and your leadership is the person that's going to be in charge of, you know, the HR, that, you know, building your leadership, building your team. And then from there, you might have, you know, under your sales, you might have a, a marketing, you might have someone that does your social media on LinkedIn. So start there. You want to put your org chart, fill in the key heads, and then we're filling in our goal as a part of our strategic plan. And let's answer this question. Yes. Do the milestones break up? I'm gonna work, I'm gonna I'm working my way right there, Miss Maureen. Get them ready, get there. Very good question. All right. So how let's squeeze this here. So now we're going to go with our marketing and sales, our leadership. We want to put how many people we think we're going to need per the contract we're looking to win. All of this is based on what we think. That's why it's a strategic plan. Our admin, we need to make sure that, because when those contracts start coming, we want to make sure that we can go on Fiverr, we can hire someone. So we do need an administration, even if we just start with QuickBooks. So we want to set our milestones. When are we going to have our first admin person up? When are we going to hire our first subcontractor? We know what our sales are and we know what we talked about for our marketing. So last is operations. 
once you've won the contract, how do you keep it? Performance is everything. They do CPARs, they do reports. How do you keep the contract? So one of the things we want to make sure of as a minimum, as a minimum, we want to have a quality assurance plan. A quality assurance plan will be sent out to you because what that does is a quality assurance plan goes into what you're going to do for that. So it's going to be like a template. And then when you win your contract, and I didn't say if, I said when, when you win your contract, it's going to say who's going to do the work, how are they going to reach out to if there's a problem, you need to have all that done. You don't want to think about that once you win the contract. Because some contracts, you can start in two weeks. I've seen some start in a week. Majority are in 30 days. So you should have your operations. That's your performance. You're, you At the very minimum, you need to have a quality assurance. You need to have your quality assurance template already ready. And you're going to, you're going to customize it based on the contract you win but you're going to have the template there and that will be sent to you when we do this entire package for you. Okay. So you're going to have your operations, your marketing, your milestones. You should have three milestones for every six weeks. So let's take a look at that. BHAG is big, hairy, audacious goals. That's your big ones. 88,000 a month. That's what I want to make. So now I've got to say in marketing, I'm, you want to go out there. Don't do with something that's comfortable. Put yourself out there. Goals should stretch you. Shouldn't be something that's easy to do. It should be something that requires you. So if I'm saying with my marketing, I'm going to do 30 or 40, I need to make sure that I write that down. So all of the milestones are going to be written down and we're, we're doing them in six weeks. Your six weeks could start Monday. Our official six weeks for individuals that work with us start January 22nd. Now, what are you doing these six weeks? You write down your milestones. I wouldn't write down more than three. This is the key right here. This is the key. The activities are what make you end up winning the goals. The activity. So let's go with this. If I say that I want to win a contract, my first contract for $250,000 and I want to win in a month. So I'm specific. I know I want it to be two fifty. dollars I know I want it to be when I want it. So it's measurable. All of that stuff. I put the time frame. It's time bound. It's relevant. It's achievable. I can do that. What activities do I need to, to do in order to win? Well, I just said you need to go on sam.gov. You need to make sure DSBS is up. You need to make sure you're making phone calls, but you need to go further than that. You need to write down the time. People may say that's crazy, but you have to be accountable to yourself. So I'm going to make phone calls from 10 to 12. I'm going to send out introduction letters from one to five on Saturday at this time. Guess what happens when Saturday at five goes by? You've got to look at yourself. Did you do it or did you talk about it? A lot of people say they want it, but they don't want to put it in what it takes activities are what allows you to meet your goals. And what this does is you're going to write down the activities and then you're going to score yourself. You're going to give yourself a score. So let's go with this. Let's say I say my activities for marketing to get my first contract. I'm going to go on to sam.gov and I'm going to look up three contracts a day on Monday between one and five. Now you may have to tweak the time. And this is also going to let you know how much time you're wasting. Are you, are you doing what you say you're doing? Because then you're going to be more mindful of your time. Why? Because now you figured out what you're worth an hour. If I'm worth 2000 something dollars an hour, I need to act that way. I need to already act as if I'm worth that money because that's eventually what I'm going to be worth because I'm making that money. So now I already know I can't waste time looking at all these things or doing things that aren't going to get me to my final goal, which is this. I'm going to, I'm going to only watch two hours of TV a day. I'm only going to do it after I've done what I need to do with setting up my goals. So if I say my marketing, I'm going to do this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then every Sunday, this is the key. Every Sunday, you score yourself. Sunday is the last day. So let's say Sunday at five. You give yourself, let's say you have five goals. Each one is worth 20. Uh, each activity, you break your goal, your milestone into activities. So if one of my activities is to go on sam.gov 
on Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Those are all my activities. I'm going to score myself a check mark and give myself a grade. Did I go on Sam and did I look up three bids on Monday? Yes, I did. I give myself the 20. My next activity, did I go to acquisition.gov? Did I do this? So now I've got five activities under marketing. Did I do each five of them? Yes, I did. I get a hundred. So right here on your, let's see. Let's see. We didn't put that on there. On each one of you should have your worksheet. Worksheet On your worksheets, you will see where there is a, a, there is a part there that says activities, scorecard, milestones, goals. It's right there for you. What I want you to do is probably Xerox it before you write in it, or you can copy it and make it just like that. So now I know my activities for my operation is looking in sam.gov, yada, yada, yada. My mark my marketing, I'm sorry, is sam.gov, blah, blah, blah. My operations is making sure that I have my quality assurance. I know my job description. I know how long my employees have been there or how I've got my references. This is the people that are going to do the work. That's your operations. For my sales, I know I want to get one contract for $250,000. I know what my sales is. My leadership, I want to hire one 1099 person. In my administration, do I have my finances? Do I have some kind of way to get my profit and loss statements? Do I have someone to do my invoicing? If not, I need to write that down. You can't be everything to everyone all the time. You might start out that way, but you have to eventually build your team. Now, I've got my scorecard right next to it. When Sunday at five o'clock comes or whenever you're ready, but it needs to be on Sunday because that's the end of your week. It starts Monday to Sunday. How many of your operation activities did you really do? You should have a six week goal and you should be, you should have what you do every week to get you closer to what your six weeks goal is. So let's say in six weeks, I want to land a contract for 250,000. That's my six weeks because that 250 is going to have me lead me to the million. So I need to start with a six week goal because I haven't made any money. So I'm not going to go straight to a million. So in the six weeks, I write down what my goal is, my BHA, my big, hairy, audacious goal, a $250,000 contract. That's my BHA. That's, that's it. That's what it is. Now, what do I need to do in each one of those categories in order to get in my marketing? What do I need to do in my marketing to get that goal? If I win that goal, what do I need to do in my operations? What do I need to do in my sales? What do I need to do in my leadership? And what do I need to do in my admin? Do I even have someone to send the invoices to the government? Do I have my W-9? Do I have my W-9 ready? Have I downloaded from irs.gov and I've already got my EIN and all that stuff on my W-9? So when they say, are you ready? This is when we prepare, not when we win the contract now. We want to get up and going. Now, this is where we get to really look at ourselves. On Sunday at five o'clock, if I didn't do my SAMs, I can't give myself it because all you're doing is taking the number of activities and dividing it. It's a hundred. So if you have five, that's 20 each. If you have three, divide 103. So that's how we know we shouldn't have any more than five and no more than three activities for each one of the, of the goals that we have. When I write down my goals, I'm giving myself a score. If you do not have a score of 80, you failed. The majority of the people that have a score of 80 or higher reaches their milestone. And your milestone goes to your big HA, your B, your B H A G. Milestone leads to that. Activities lead to the milestone. That's the way it goes. So your activities are what make you win with the milestones. I want a $250,000 contract. And my big hairy goal is at 88,000. I want 88,000 a month, but I'm breaking down small. So my milestones are the little pebbles that end up being the big goal for the whole year. My big goal is my BHAG. My big goal for leadership, I want five people on my team. My big goal for sales is I want a million dollar contract. But now I break it down into my six week milestones and then I break my milestones into my activities. Do you guys start to get that? Because if you get that, you will start to see how you reach the goal. Are you starting to see how you break it down in order to, so put a one in the chat if you're starting to understand you break the activities down. So first, you know what the big goal is. Then you break down six-week milestones. And then you break the milestones down to activities. And then you score yourself. Yes. So what happens is, if you're getting 80 and above, 
your chances of getting that goal are better than you can imagine. That That's the goal. So you're going to come up with what is your, your, your biggest goal? What is your biggest goal for this whole year? Your dream year, 2024. I want to be making 500,000. Now I've got to figure out and divide what the 500,000 is into a month because I got to figure out what I need to make a month. Now I need to know how am I going to go about if I'm marketing to a government, I know that the way I'm going to market to that government is I've got to get with the connectors, the Ozibu and the small business program managers. I need to get to them. There's several ways I'm going to be able to get to them. They're going to come to me if my DSVS profile looks good. That means I am just kind of being reactive. I'm reacting for them coming to me. Proactive is when I'm sending out emails and I'm and I'm actually making these phone calls and you can choose either the emails or the phone calls because you're going to have a list of both. You're going to have the Ozzy Boost, which I showed you. And then there's this list of over 2000 that you're going to receive that is for making those phone calls. And it breaks them down. Like if I'm at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, it breaks it down to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Then it breaks it down to the operation officer, Wright Pat. We're looking for the, the, the agency underneath. So that's what you're looking for when you, when you start to get this. When you get this, there's a lot. So take your time and work it. Now, the goal is on Sunday at five for you to have a score of at least 80. You're going to break it into six weeks. Why six weeks? Because what a lot of people do that's an error, they break their goals into 90-day increments. What happens in 90 days? You're going, I always tell people the story. I live in Florida. I live in D.C., 95. Let's say I'm going to New York. 95 north and south. That's the highway. I've got my car. I'm gassed up. I've fed myself. I'm rested. I'm ready to go. But if I'm going the wrong direction with all great intention, I'll never get there. I'll never get to New York if I'm going south to Florida, no matter what I'm doing. So why we break it into six-week increments is we go, let's say what you're doing doesn't work. You might be really, really working hard with calling and you're still not getting anywhere. Guess what it is? If you're not getting anywhere, it's because you sound the same like everyone else. You haven't created a signature system. You haven't created something that makes that government agency feel as if you're going to save them time, money, blah, blah, blah. Usually it's going to be time or money. That's what we're looking for. So if you can say that you're saving them time or you're saving them money, or you've gotten something that you've been able to, you know, like when they're looking at doing sole source, you have this one you know, item software that's just unbelievable that no one else has, or this training system that you've created, just like people did during COVID. Everybody wanted a facility support services then because people people realize that health, I mean, you could really die from not having an environment that was clean and healthy more than ever. It, it highlighted that. So if I can come in and I can say something like, we have this item where we can disinfect and kill germs in 10 minutes faster than the norm, that might be important to me. You have to be able to come up with your facts and figures, 50% faster, shorter. They just don't want to hear, I've got this great product that can you know save lives. No, we want to know why, how, what does it do? That's how we're going to find that out. So... Now, I want you guys to start thinking of your activities. I want you to think of your six weeks. I want you to start thinking of your activities. I want you to divide it into what um, is your scorecard going to be. I want you to choose a time on Sunday that you can stick with. I want you to know what your year goal is, 250, 500,000, whatever it is, you work backwards. I want 500,000. What do I need to do every month? what I need to do every day, what I need to do every hour. Because that's when you're going to start to see if you show up or not. The activities. Now, let's say in six weeks, what happens? We go from January 22nd to whatever six weeks is, February 15th, whatever, or January 22nd, let's say March 5th, something like that. At the end of March 5th, if I've gotten 100 and I still haven't budged, then I need to, re I need to pivot. That's why you do six weeks. If your scorecard is a 40, then you can't even hold yourself accountable because you don't even know if what you're doing is working. You haven't given it your all. But if your scorecard is 80 or above and you still hadn't had a capability briefing, you've got to figure out 
if you're winning, your goal, your CTA call to action should be, I'm going to do five phone calls and my goal is to land one capability um, briefing a week and then one connection where they end up giving me a contract or letting me bid on a contract because I might be one of three people. You need to know what is your goal? What is the call to action? What are you looking to achieve to know if you've won? Of course, we know the bottom line is a contract, but we don't want to go from zero to nothing, from zero to a contract. We want to get some measurable items in between to know if it's working. Let's say, for instance, if I do all that and it doesn't work, then what do I do? You take two weeks in between the six weeks. I think there's about, I think if we counted it correctly, there are around six, six week segments or seven. So you go six weeks, you take a two week break. The two week break is to assess what's working and what's not. Well, I did get a capability briefing, but I didn't land a contract. Now I need to go look at my capability briefing, briefing and look to see, is it, is it work? It is, is it working? Does it look like it's going to keep someone's interest? Does it talk about what I can do? Am I just, am I going on too long? Because if you were able to get the Azibu or the small business program to introduce you, and then you were able to take that person that, that, you know, contracting specialist who has the contract and say, Hey, I've got a bid that I'm going to put out in a week. I want you to bid on it. Only you and two other people. Let's say you don't receive it. You can always ask for a debrief. A debrief is when they send you all the information on who won, how much they made, why they won, and why you didn't. Never lose an opportunity to do a debrief. Never lose an opportunity to get out there and do walkthroughs because you meet other people that you can team with. And remember, my formula is offer, buyer, avenue. That's how you're winning the contract. Relations, that's how you're building the relationships with the contracting officers and the specialists and the Ozdebu. And T for teaming. You want to team up. I teamed up. I couldn't have done all the work if I, had, if I hadn't had a team. And these were other contractors, small businesses that we would go in together. One would bid high, one bid a little lower. And we build, a, a, build like a great friendship. Okay, so let's look at the specific question before. Okay. I've done 75% of this already. I'm using the middleman approach and I'm subcontracting to one of the largest payroll services in the country. They have assigned to me the department of 50 people to work with my 230 contracts. I sent them since January 1st. So what's your question, Don? I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, no, I just wanted to let you know um, I'm enjoying this, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, those 230 contracts, as a middleman, I I have one particular company, ADP, that I'm working with, so I don't have to jump and look for payroll services to uh, to uh, do these deals for me. So I just want to let you know that uh, my question is, is that uh, uh, most of these deals I'm sending to them are not federal. Some are federal. 95% of the deals I'm sending them, uh, I send them uh, probably 10 or 15 a day so far. Uh, some are 40, but that's too much right now that they I'm backing them up, so I had to cut it down. So my question is, I'm sending them state and city uh, contracts, and a few of them are uh, federal, sand.gov. Mm -hmm. So um, so in other words, um, would you have any uh, uh, questions to me about that? On what I'm doing? No, I think, I mean, you and I have spoken before. Are you, are you in the DMV area? Uh, am I where? Are you in oh, the, it, I'm where, in Philly. I used oh, to yeah, live I'm in Philly. Maryland. Okay. I, I'm in you Philly. and I have spoken before. I think that's, I think that's a good concept. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I'm excited because yeah. this was just like, it was handed to me. I had to create this. So this government contract with what I've been learning over two years, uh, this is something that I created See, because they paid me 2% on the back end, on a net 90. So I have to get a quarter, you know, quarterly. I get I paid every 30, every 90 days. So that's on the back end. But these deals, they are not really familiar with the government. So I'm teaching them as I go. I'm learning from you. And I'm training them as I'm sending them what to do because this is something, they're probably doing it because uh, they're such a big uh, company, ADP. Right. I, you know, so... 
they are learning. And I this is here the here's the deal. I want to be very free. I want them to send me the packages before they go to before they submit them. I want them to submit it to me so I can review it, so I can make sure I'm the prime on that contract. That I see they they never really see they told me this, uh Ms. M that I told them uh, on the deal with subcontract, I gotta uh give you a split, you know, like 70-30. I usually give them 70%. They said, you know what they said? They said, no, we don't want no cut. We give you the hundred percent. Okay, well then you can't, Don, you are, you sound like you are making it work as a middleman. I have a couple of questions on the middleman because, well, thank you, Don, for that information. So, you know, it definitely works. As a middleman to the DSBSB geared towards the connection that I provide as a consultant and what services a vendor will provide. Also, does the middleman NAX code need to be the primary? Your middleman NAX code is what, the, what you want to offer the government. That's what the NAX code should be. So, the middleman should be where you feel. So if I'm looking to do nursing and I don't, I know nothing about nursing. I'm going to do it as the middleman. I'm doing logistics. There are a lot of companies that do none of the stuff. There's no way they could do all those projects. They're like a project manager. There's no yeah. way they could do all that. So what they do is they, there's not one middleman NAX code. It's what you want to do. Go to usaspending.gov, see where they're spending the money so you make sure that there's something that they really want. And then your goal is to find the contract and then find the, I always I always build the relationship first. I'm going to build the relationship first before I find the contract. I can do this in a week because I want to make sure that I have someone that's going to be able to do it. And then I'm, I feel comfortable with them. So as a middleman, should the DSP profile be geared towards the connection that I provide as a consultant? Yes. You want your DSBS, your capability statement, your introduction letter to be what you want to provide. If you're looking to provide something that someone else is going to do, you want it to be geared because they don't care if it's you or someone else. They just want it done. So I hope I answered that question. Can I, can, as I... 90% of my contracts are sent to them on the city and the state. Is that still re the least the state is government? Because I know federal, yeah. Sam. So yeah, your, your government is federal, state, local, county. Okay, great. great. Yeah, that's still, that's still government. All right. So All right. let me see what the next question is before we get ready to wrap up, because I just want to make sure that we understand. Okay, uh, I see about the female. I'll get to that one. Um, okay, I answered that question. I hope I did. And we're going to have a Q&A before we get off in a couple minutes. I'm looking to do a visit with FEMA recovery phase, providing translation and cleaning service to the middleman. That's good. FEMA is a very good, uh, FEMA is one of the agencies that even if the budget isn't passed, they're going to need you. So that's a good one. FEMA is one of those. I've, I've got a disaster relief. So hopefully one of you guys are talking about FEMA. You've gone to that because we narrow in on how to become a vendor with FEMA. If not, look on FEMA.gov under the doing business. They give you a list of exactly what they're looking for. So FEMA is one of those that you want to go with. Okay. I am going to share with you guys the CTA so that we know about the Corporate Transparency Act. Let's get ready to wrap up with the... Um... Now, before we wrap up, we just want to make sure that you understand your cycle. In your workbook, it says cycle one. That's your first six weeks. That's your first cycle. Write that date down there. Then you've got your milestones, your goals, everything. Then you're going to write down what worked and what didn't. Well, the way you're going to know what worked and what didn't is what did you meet your milestones? Did you market 15 companies? Yes, I did. Did you get one capability briefing? Yes, I did. Then it worked. If you didn't market, why didn't you? I ran out of time. I didn't realize it was going to take as much. You need to explain why you did not do the activity. Because if you're not doing the activity, you're not going to reach your goal. Don't even play. Don't even waste your time. You, there's no way. So you're not going to even reach your goal. So that is the most important part. Keeping the score and doing the activity. Fabulous. Thank you. Yes, I've taken care of the profile vendor. Thanks so much for always providing such value information. Thank you, Gail. You guys are just so sweet. So we want to make sure that we understand our cycle. Cycle one, two, three, four. I think there's like five or six cycles. We want to make sure that we write down at the end of the Sunday, we're going to do six weeks. When we take our two-week break, we're going to write down we're taking our two weeks. So we're like a groundhog. We're digging, 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 digging. And then we, whoop, you peek up and you see what's working. You're going to write down what didn't work, why it didn't work, and what are you going to do differently? 
I'm going, I know I did a hundred, a hundred didn't work. Now I need to do two. I don't think I sounded clear on what I was looking at doing. I don't think I've figured out what agency is going to be a best fit for me. I don't think I've gotten the right references for the middleman. You want to write it down and write down what is working and what's not. Now, once you write down your cycles, take two weeks, implement changes, pass it around, start your cycle again. You might, I think two weeks is good because you really want to assess why you didn't do what you need to do and set it up again. Set up another group of milestones and do the six weeks and see what's working. Either your, your signature statement isn't good, you don't have something different. Your, your CAPE statement isn't good. It doesn't really show what your core, your core competencies are. I've seen people win contracts without past performance, so that's not going to do it. I've seen people win contracts without certs. That's not what it is. Certs and past performance are not it. I've got students that win all the time doing middleman that had no past performance, but he was found on DSBS. And when she talked to him, he sounded as if he knew what he was talking about. How? He visited the agency. He visited Veteran Affairs. He looked at the budget. He started looking at competition on DSBS. What are they doing well? What are they not? Let me start looking at these companies then going to their websites. You've got to do, government isn't a secret, but it's a process. And in order to win these contracts, you have to put the work in. Now, this is going to start telling you guys if you're doing what you need to do. And now we're going to go to the CTA. Are there any questions at all before I wrap up? And also, I'm going to invite you. I actually have a membership doing this with you. So I will share that with you. Anyone's interested, I've got a link. You can sign up. I'll also send the information out in an email. But I am doing this for the whole year. I do this every year. And I have met and exceeded almost 90% of my goals. Miss Miss Sam, I'm yes. looking forward to I know you booked up for uh for your your master class, I think it is, for the next one is in you said um uh, February uh, the next are you talking about crack the gov code? Yeah, crack the gov code. Yeah, yeah, crack the gov code starts in March. Okay. Now I'm looking forward to it because I'm I know I'm gonna get some contracts at the end of this month and they usually pay if it's up front companies okay. I think it's the net 30 and I'm looking to sign up with you. Now my question is if I get like three or four contracts this year, can that is it do you have a department where I can send it to you maybe for a brief to look them over to make sure before I submit sure, if you're one of my students. Absolutely. Am I considered one of your students today? You're, in, you're one of my students when you're in one of our, if you're like, this is a workshop. Now, if you become oh, one okay. of my students in my in my membership, which I'm going to talk about, then you're one of my students. A workshop is not really considered a student because okay. you just might come, you can just come for the workshop. I try to give you enough information that if you don't do anything else with me, this right. was worth your time. No, yeah, I'm looking okay. forward to But a student is an up, actual yeah. one of my students where you've actually signed up for disaster league, crack the gut code, the membership I'm talking about, then you're an actual student. Okay, okay. Okay. The recording will be sent out. You'll receive it no um no later than tomorrow. You'll receive it around, around about 25 out 24 hours. So yes, the recording will be sent out. I'm sending out the Azibu sheet I showed you guys, and you're also going to get the um sheet with the 2000 names. And you you should already have the worksheets. They were already sent out. Now, let's look at the CTA. All of you guys have probably heard of Now, no questions on setting the goals. Okay. Just want to make sure we're good. Now let's look at the, um, let's come here and let's look at, go oh, here, I didn't mean to do that. Let's look at our CTA. So the CTA is the Corporate Trans Transparency Act. So let's see if I can't find the, B. let's see, what is it? Um, uh, Euro, it'll come to me. This is where you're going to go and set up. So the CTA is the Corporate Transparency Act. And that means that if you have a, if any of you have an LLC that started in January of 2024 on to today, you have to report, it's called the Business Owner's uh, ownership information reporting, BOI. 
I'm going to share you share with you the screen. So anyone that they pro they passed a law in January 2021, there was a lot of fraud, and they passed a law because with a lot of LLCs, some states you don't know have to know who owns it, who not. You can own it, you can launder your money, you can do all that. So they passed in 2021, but it didn't become effective until January 1st, 2024. Have you guys heard of this? Put it, put a, put a, uh, a one in the chat if you've heard of it. Okay, so you guys have heard it. So what ends up happening is, yes. So if you started your business in 2023, you have 90 days to fill out this beneficial ownership reporting, information reporting. You have 90 days. If you do not fill this information out to it's the Bureau of this Department of, of, a, of a, the Treasury, and there's a Bureau underneath, the, it's called FinCEN. So it's Financial Center Information. If you do not fill it out, you will be fined $500 a day and you can do jail time. So now let me share the screen with you and show you. It's very simple. Do not let anyone tell you you have to pay some money for it. Oh, let me share the screen here. Hold on. Don't let anyone say you have to do all these things. It's very, very simple. Let's see if I can't find my screen share here. Oh, let's do it like this. Sometimes I have to exit the full screen. And let's go here, share screen. So this is where we're going to go. So I see that all of you, or a lot of you have heard of it. Yes, 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 yes. And you're going to go, let me see if I can bring it up right here. It's called B. O I reporting. So beneficial owner. Here we go. So you're going to go to here. And this is where you're going to do your report. Very simple. You're going to go to fincen.gov.boi. It's going to tell you right here. If you're looking at, are you ready to do your um, prepare your report? It's going to allow you to go right here to start doing your filing. It's going to ask you your name, your address, and then it's going to ask you to upload a driver's license. I think a driver's license or a passport. They want a photo of you. You know, when you've done an LLC or S corp or S corp or any of those before, you didn't have to do a photo. The time frame is the key. Anything before. 2022, anything before 2022, you have a year. It's not due until January 1st, 2025. Anything you started last year, you have to do in 90 days. Anything you started in this year, you should have already done it. It's effective January 1st. If you started LLC or S Corp or anything like that, January 2nd, you're past due. Do it as soon as you can. No cost, no fuss, no muss. Driver's license, passport, it's going to ask you a couple of questions, prepare it, boom, boom, you're done. Has anyone done it yet? Has I anyone think heard? I, I think I did something like that for where I had to send my license in some government agency, but how would I check to know if, if, if I'm already in the system? You'll know if you've done it. If you haven't come here and filled no. out the beneficial ownership information, you haven't done it. My okay. LSD was established in 2019. You still need to do it. So anything before 2023, so if you did something in 2022, 2020, 2019, you have one year to be compliant. You will be starting to get fined $500 and you can do jail time if you are not compliant by January 1st, 2025. If you started a business last year, you have 90 days to be compliant or you can do jail time $500. If you started a business this year, you're already late. You're too, you've got to get started now. They could start finding you $500 in jail time. So if you started this year, you should have already reported it. If you've done it last year, you have 90 days. If you did it, um, if you have, if it's, it's, if you haven't, you just have to do it one time. You just do it the one time. If you have an LLC, limited liability, all of those um, C's that have been used. If you have something you haven't been, if let's say you got your EIN number, but you never never started a business with it, then you don't have an LLC. You don't have, if, if you get if you have your EIN number, but you never started your business, you never did an S Corp, a C Corp, an LLC, then you, you, you don't. Sole proprietors, they're not asking for because you divulge all that information with the sole proprietor. 
you, it's you. But with an LLC and all that, then you have to. The site is called F is in Frank, I is in Indian, N is in Nancy, C is in Charlie, E is in Indian. I'm sorry, FinCEN. So it's F I N C E N. F is in Frank, I is in Indian, N is in Nancy, C is in Charlie, E is in Edward, N is in Nancy. Gov backslash B O I. It stands for Beneficial Ownership Reporting. That's the site. I will have the link in you guys' information. Believe it or not, it's 155. It is time to wrap up. I've truly enjoyed it. Now, for anyone that wants to come along with me, the whole year I have a membership. The membership, we go through this together. So once a month, we all get together and we go over our milestones. We talk about what worked and I, I'm doing it work, work with you. We You start on my six weeks. My six weeks is January 22nd. So you start on my six weeks. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I try to give great information. Um, we start on my six weeks and you come along together with me. And the goal is for us to get a million dollar contract in that year. So that is where we are. And um, thank you again. This was the best $47 I've ever spent. Well, thank you, Don. The membership is $47. Uh, this is the link if anyone is interested. I'm going to put it right here. You would need to submit your payment by January 20th. This is for you to be in the membership. The membership, you will receive the bidding platform, Gov Direction, and Gov Bid. You receive a once a month, um, it will be on our school platform, going over all of each month. So we would start with January, February, March. And it's $47 a month for you to mm -hmm. set the goals. I We look at helping you set the goals. We give you training. We talk about government agencies. We kind of fine tune, not specifically one government agency, but just how to end up getting a contract with the goals, specifically with your goals. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So the um the the membership is GovWin. It's called GovWin membership. Uh, you would be working along with me and my team. Sometimes they'll be doing a little class with you. Sometimes I will. And it is recorded so that way you can do it anytime. It's $47 a month. And it's designed for us to take you from January till the end of the year with looking focused on the goals you set. Some of you set 500. It's the same, whether you've done a million dollar goal or a $500,000 goal, you've got to do the milestones, you've got to do the activities and you're able to send in what worked and what didn't. And we're going to help you tweak it. That's a part of what you get for the membership. Um, so, let's see. So I won't be considered a student or I want to Yeah, sure. then you'd be considered a student. Okay, great. Yeah, then you're considered... <laughs> The link was sent from the Zoom, Miss M. I'm a little confused what you mean. Let's see, let me put in the, the chat. Let's see. I'm a little confused when you say the link was sent from Zoom. So let me let me put it here. Let me see it. It should be. I was saying the, the link you provide is for Zoom link. It is not, doesn't take you to a website or anything. You're talking about for, for submitting the payment? Yes. Okay, well then hold tight. Hold one second. I'm going to get that for you guys. Let me stop the video and let me get that. Give me one second and I'll put that in there for you. And then we will be on our way. I apologize for not having the link there. So let me get that for you. And then you would be a student. You guys would, if you're doing any of our memberships, any of our, our courses, anything, you're considered a student. And anyone that's been here with me know that I try my best to give you classes and special things like that so that that way you are able to be right there with me. Okay, now I've got it. So here is the link. Let's make sure this is right. Here we go. There we go. That is our QuickBooks. So 47 would include Gov Direction. That's our bid platform. Bid Search, that's another one. That's one of my favorite. It gives you all these government agencies. We will walk you through it and show you how, show you how to do it. It will include going over the goals and submitting them so we can see what's working and what's not. 
So we would be together when we're submitting them all together to see what that is. You're on my six weeks. So we take our six week, we take our two week break and we're breaking down our goals. Now we're only taking 20 members because we're working closely with you. So we ain't taking 20 because I had about 50 people that signed up. Some people didn't show up because they want the recording. You will be receiving the courting. You would need to submit your payment no later than January 20th to be in the membership. And you will get all this information. Um, yes. Yeah, so the membership is for one year. The membership is for one year and the membership fee is $47. And that includes the bid platform. Our bid platforms are 150 by themselves. Gov Direction costs 100 and bid search costs 49. So you're getting all that and we're working along with you with your goals. You will receive that information on everything's included and the due date. So no worries. Okay. Any questions before we end? Any questions? Yes. Can't hear you. You're going to, ha you have to unmute. Okay. I just did. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, Ms. M. Thank you. This was really good. Um, thank you so much. You're and welcome. I have a question um, about the, I'm also one of your students. So do, do some of the membership inter, um, overlap with some of the things we're already mm -hmm. getting? Because it sounds familiar. No, with the, no? Okay. with the Crack the Gov Code, we're talking about, when we're talking about Crack the Gov Code, we're giving you what you need to do, but this is more of an accountability partnership. Okay. So that, so yeah, this is now with the Crack the Gov Code, you do receive just the two months of the membership for the, yes. for the bid platform. This should get it for a year. This should okay. get all the time. Yeah. And okay. we don't walk you through the goals. We tell you on Monday, do this, Tuesday, do this, but we're not setting up the activities on what you need to do. And we're not monitoring accountability for a lot of people is important because they know they're not going to do it on their own. Okay. So we're wonderful. holding you accountable. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. what You're welcome. Out. And as far as the days, it is on our school platform so you can have access 24 seven. So it's not like you have to do it on any day and uh, you'll get all this information. Um, we are only doing the 20 members right for right now because we want to make sure that we get everyone up and going. And then we have other members, but just from this workshop, oh, we're only doing 20. Okay. Let's see. I think I answered the last questions there. Let's see if that was it. Let me go ahead and get this out of here so I can see. And we're going to wrap up. Let's see. I think I answered. So yeah, there's um, the membership is a one-time thing. Um, um, we're sending the capability briefing to, to our email. Yes, we'll send you that as well, uh, what that looks like. And then on um, inside of this, we do mock interviews. We show, we're telling you how to sound, what to say when you're calling a contracting officer or if you're calling a, a representative or if you're an event. So all of that we do as well in mock interviews. Um, okay. So I told them I will I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Shirley. Shirley, I can't hear you. She might be on that might have been an accident, but I have another question if that's okay. okay. <laughs> um, is it month to month or is it a year contract? I think you said it's a year, but I'm not sure if it's a contract or not. It's no, it's not a contract. It's month to month. Okay. okay. Yes. Wonderful. Thank right. you. So it's month to month. So you do the month to month and when you, um, you know, we send out the information and it's a month to month. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure spending my Saturday with you. I normally don't do Saturdays, but today I want to do Saturdays. Hope you all were able to get something out of it. Look for this tomorrow around this time and um, enjoy your Saturdays. I'll send all the information out about the membership, what's included, so you can make sure it's a good fit for you. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys. You guys are in the Crack the Gov Code. I'll see you on, um, you know, your modules. Number five releases on Monday and we do our live on Tuesday. So I'll see you guys. Happy MLK Day. Make sure we make a difference in our communities and have a fun, fantastic uh, Saturday. And all this information, including re recording, will be out to you tomorrow. Take care, Thank you guys. You. Thank, you. Thank, right. you. Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.